Every role has its strengths in League of Legends, and as different people, we gravitate toward different strengths. Maybe you want to go for clutch insects as a jungler that mains Lee Sin, or sick out plays as Vayne, but we know that you guys really just want to flame Horizon every noob you come across top lane. Before you get to that point though, you have a lot to learn about top. That's why we're sharing our 13 tips to take down top lane. Also, if you're looking for a place to learn from your fellow top lane enthusiasts, or simply complain about your junglers, why not join the Pro Guides League of Legends Discord? We'll be sharing all our YouTube uploads so you'll never miss a beat, while also providing a space for League players of all types, so check out the link in the description below. Before we get started, our question of the day is, which top lane champion is the most annoying to lane against? Let us know all your answers in the comments, and without further delay, let's get into it. Number 1. How to stack the first three waves with strong early game picks and win 1v2s every time. Stacking the first three waves is an art form, so here are the general concepts you want to follow and route to victory. You need to be able to start pushing the wave towards your enemy and threaten the trade if they try to walk up to the wave. You want the wave to push as slowly as possible. If you push it any faster, the third wave will more than likely awkwardly crash in front of the tower. Look for a standard level 2 cheese without damaging the minions. You should reach level 2 first. This makes it so that the enemy top laner can't walk up without taking a terrible trade. Once you've got those concepts sorted out, you have four options. Call your jungler to dive by crashing the wave into tower. You choose to get ganked and outplay the 1v2 by focusing the champion taking minion aggro. You push in the wave and ward with an optional reset. Lastly, if you did a good job poking and zoning, you can solo dive them. Be ready to predict their flash when they go for it. A few more tips for this strategy include, it's easier to do this on champions with early lane pressure, such as Jace, Renekton, and Kled. Stacking the minion wave for a 1v2 outplay will often look different. Be ready to adapt your play and learn from experience. And that's how you paint your picture on the beautiful canvas of top lane. If you're into the little things that lead up to big plays, be sure to smash that subscribe button for even more in-depth analysis. There's so much to League of Legends and we're always covering a new angle. All right, number two, how to blind pick and counter pick in top lane. When blind picking, you often want to consider how many counters are available to your champion. Here's a few top lane champions that can shrug off a majority of matchups. Blind picks, Renekton, Aatrox, Kled, Jace, Vladimir, Gangplank, Irelia, Kennen. When it comes to hard counter picks, here's a few for everyone involved. Quinn can make Renekton's day pretty sad with her range and movement speed, especially with cleanse to cancel out his stun. Aatrox has been a meta staple since his rework, but so has Aurelia, and she just feels like the queen of 1v1 domination. Kled has a lot of strong matchups, but Fiora has the damage and healing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the cantankerous Cavalier. Jace is probably the premier win lane win game champion with his ranged kit, but Wukong can make that all go poof with a standard all-in. Vladimir likes to take it easy with a farmed focus early game, but Kled can really force the issue with his grievous wounds. Gangplank is as complete as any top laner can get in the laning phase, but Yorick takes a shovel to all his barrels and oranges. We said that Aurelia is the queen of 1v1 domination, but Poppy can be pretty annoying for her in the early game. Kennen doesn't take many bad matchups, but Kale will eventually get there with Grasp as her keystone of choice. Number three, how to use your first three teleports. Your first teleport should generally be used to get back to lane after a play. Traditionally, this one should be used selfishly to keep yourself ahead of the curve or at pace with the game. That being said, if there's a juicy play happening bot lane, you can teleport to secure the play and instantly reset to head back top lane. Your second teleport should be used to enter a play around bot lane or dragon. This is to secure the second dragon of the game or accelerate the game as it transitions between 13 and 17 minutes. Your third teleport should be used to flank around Baron in order to secure the objective and push the game forward. At that point, all remaining teleports should be used to join a team fight. Traditionally, you want to pressure the side lane and force the enemy top laner to react. Once they've reacted to the wave, you can teleport to the other side of the map for a numbers advantage. Number four, how to properly split push and side lane. Split pushing is considered an art. You need to understand when you're on the weak side of the map so that you don't push up dangerously. Have you ever seen your top laner die 1v4 in a side lane while furiously typing, why aren't you doing something? Yeah, I think we all have. If you've ever felt pressured by this, don't. It's the top laner's fault. As a top laner, you need to be able to recognize when your team is in a position to react to your pressure. You don't want to be that guy on your team. If you're able to get side lane pressure, don't pressure until you see more numbers on the map and your team is ready to tango. There are two ways to ideally side lane. 
First, you're playing a champion that doesn't have the best side lane pressure, like Orn or Maokai. When you push the wave past the halfway point, you should look to roam and help your team force a fight or set up vision around objectives. Secondly, you're pushing up and pressuring the side lane, only doing so when you know you can do it safely. This is where push vision, push execute comes in handy. You can establish vision, then look to aggressively pressure with the information of whether it's safe or not. Number five, understanding when you're weak side and playing to survive the 2v1 dive. When you're playing the early laning phase around levels four, five, and six, you need to recognize when your jungler is on the opposite side of the map and avoid taking heavy trades. If you take heavy trades, you're prone to ganks and even worse, dives. Instead, you should look to let the wave stack up toward you and avoid taking any poke until the wave comes under the tower. Since you're full HP, you can either look to outplay a dive or simply farm. Number six, knowing when to trade and when to just let the wave push in. This concept is a bit more nuanced, so we're gonna explain this assuming that both players are playing the exact same champion runes and have the same amount of gold and experience. Both players are playing Kled. If the wave is even, both players can trade to try and establish an HP and minion wave advantage. From there, the player that can't contest the wave anymore should avoid trading and focus on farming whatever they can without being engaged. Be patient and wait for the wave to come to the tower. On the other hand, the player with the HP advantage should look to trade more aggressively with the bigger minion wave. Basically, look to trade if you have the bigger minion wave. If you don't, avoid trading so that you don't sacrifice any minion gold. Now, let's bring this back into reality. That was a nice demonstration in a bubble, but there are times when you can and should abandon this fundamental. If these variables are present, go ahead and try to make a play. You have a jungler coming in to gank, and you can kill the enemy laner through the big wave. You have a really good counter matchup that can win, even through minion waves. Think Wukong vs. Jace or Kled against Vladimir. You're extremely far ahead and can fight through the minion wave without repercussions. Number seven, specific ward placements. When you get lane priority top lane, these are the primary wards you want to place. Blue side, red side. These wards aren't absolute. You can go for different variations or look for deeper wards while ahead. These are just a great starting point to understand where you should be warding when you have lane priority. Number eight, how to use your advantage once you've taken the enemy tower. Here's a common situation in top lane. You've taken the enemy's tower by 12 or 13 minutes because your jungler took Rift Herald, and now you don't know what to do. Assuming that you're ahead and can win the 1v1, here's where we apply push vision, push execute. Step one, push out the wave. Step two, establish deep vision. Step three, return to lane and push out the next wave. Step four, from here, either bait the 1v2 and outplay, or roam mid and force a play. Number nine, understanding key cooldowns to win small trades. Every champion in League of Legends has cooldowns, that's a given. When it comes to these cooldowns, it's important to have a general idea of how long the enemy cooldowns are relative to your own, especially in mana-less matchups. If you know that someone's ability isn't up for another four seconds, but you have a full rotation, it can be a huge opportunity for you to go in for the trade and disengage before their abilities come back up. This may take a bit of studying to fully apply to your gameplay, but once you learn and apply these numbers, you'll start to feel them out more naturally. Remember, this can also be key when it comes to dodging other champion abilities like Elise's Cocoon or Lee Sin's Sonic Wave. Number 10, the early game Gouda. There's a lot of cheese in League of Legends and we're gonna run through a few of them here. One cheese that you can try is centered on waiting in one of these two top lane brushes early on. Keep in mind that you'll generally need to be on a strong early game champion such as Renekton, Jace, or Kled. Once the enemy top laner has leashed, they will walk to lane and eventually run into you. Open up with an auto attack and immediately use your abilities afterwards. Since you stacked Conqueror first, you're likely to win the level one fight with ease. Just hope that the enemy jungler didn't have plans to immediately gank your lane after his buff. Number 11, how to play from behind. Playing from behind can be frustrating, whether it came down to a poor matchup or early failed skirmishes. No matter how good you are though, it will eventually happen, and knowing how to deal with it will give you the best chances of bouncing back. First, you should determine whether you outscale your matchup or not. If you do outscale, avoid trading out of tower range and keep letting the wave crash under your tower so that you can farm and scale up. If you don't outscale, trade where you can and look for an outplay opportunity to get you back in the game. Don't be afraid to play safe and reach your one item power spike before trying to play aggressively and get back in the game. Number 12, how to itemize. We're not gonna sit here all day and list out all the common top lane purchases like Black Cleaver, Tiamat, Trinity Force, and Steric Gage. However, we will point out a few extremely situational items that you should keep in mind while playing melee top laners. Starting with Hex Drinker. 
If you notice that both the enemy top laner and jungler deal magic damage, it might be a great opportunity to build an early hex drinker and surprise them in 1v2 with the shield for an outplay. Ramble Vest If the enemy top laner auto attacks often, feel free to purchase this item alongside a potential ninja tabby to help negate their damage. Executioner's Calling if Bramble Vest doesn't suit your champion, but the enemy top laner heals often, buy this 800 gold AD item instead. Quicksilver Sash The Quicksilver Sash, as your second or third item, can be useful against Mordekaiser to escape his ultimate, or more generally against champions with a specific engage ultimate, like Sejuani or Malzahar. Sanguine Blade Sanguine Blade is a very niche item that pigeonholes you into a specific playstyle, but if the enemy top laner wants to group instead of splitting against you, this can be a great opportunity to purchase the item and permanently pressure your side lane. Number 13. How to play as a melee champion in a ranged matchup This question is asked more often than not. When it comes to playing melee champions in a ranged matchup, you want to avoid taking as much poke as possible and let the wave push in. Here's a good measurement. If you're 75% HP, having missed roughly 6 to 10 minutes from the first three waves, you're looking pretty good. The main goal is to reach level 3 so that all of your abilities are online for a potential comeback trade once your wave bounces back to the enemy. Once this happens, you can call your jungler for help or take the 1v1 with all your abilities up. That concludes our video on all the tips you'll need to start carrying from top lane. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck out there on the Rift, and we'll see you all next time.